you know, but I'll never forget that drive, driving through that place. It was without a doubt the most unpleasant place that I had ever visited up to that point in my life. It kind of, the reality of that life really set in for me in that drive in the hole. Hey everyone, welcome to another sit down with Michael Francis. Hope everybody is doing well. All is good and blessed on this end. And as always, I give God all the praise, honor, and glory for that. And people, you know, you see the title of the video today. I got to be honest with you, this is not my favorite subject. Unfortunately, it is a part of the mob life that I was once very much entrenched in. And from the way you people reacted over the last video we did about bodies or the burial ground for the mob in Vegas, Lake Mead, people were, they just enjoyed it or they were interested in it. I don't know what to say, but unfortunately it's not a pleasant topic, but it's something that I know that the people that follow me want to hear. And, you know, as part of what I do, I kind of educate you on the mob life and try to give you the truth, the real side of it, without glorifying it, because obviously when you're talking about death and murder, it's not a, it's not a great subject. But again, it's just giving you information and informing you. But before I go into that, you saw the title today. It's about a place called The Hole. And it was a burial ground for bodies in New York. It was a, a place that John Gotti allegedly used. I'm not going to say he did. I was never with John or people that, you know, put a body there when it happened. Uh, so I can't say that for a fact. But, you know, from what you hear and what you know, when you're on the street, you hear things. And, and of course, you know, you can take it from there and assume that some of these things are true. But before I get into that, I, I have to comment on this horrific, horrific shooting spree that went on in that Texas school. I don't know what to say about it, people. You know, 19 kids were killed. I think another adult, I think the, the, the total is up to 21 now. Certain more were injured. It's just a horrible, horrible thing. It's been on my mind as well as everybody else's mind in the country, I'm sure, for uh, a day or two since this happened, and it's, it's just horrible. I don't know what to say other than the fact that there is a lot of evil in this world. I don't know what motivated this young man. I don't know the details. I don't know anything about it. I'm not going to get political and talk about guns. This is not the time. This is a time for healing, for people to get together and try to find the reasons that these things are happening. Here's a troubled young man, 18 years old. I understand he shot his grandmother first and then went to the school and did this uh, absolute tragic, tragic, tragic killing of these young people. I don't know what to say, you know. To me, I just pray to God that things like this stop, that we find the root causes of this, you know. Look, over the past 20 years or so, I've spoken to so many young people that have come out of broken homes without a father figure in a house, with a mother struggling to do her best, trying to, you know, get herself, you know, organized and, and get on with her life nonetheless trying to do that with her children that so many mothers are not equipped to do. They get married at a young age. Look, I'll say this, I'm gonna take a hit for it, but I don't care. You know, there's a time in life when you have to be bold without criticizing anybody individually, but you gotta be bold in certain things. I believe that so much of the trouble that we're having today is due to the breakup of the family. That's it. I know from experience, I speak to these young kids. So many of them tell me, hey, I never had a father figure in my house. Michael, I never grew up, you know, watching anybody that I cared about, that I idolized. Nobody ever taught me anything. I've heard this time and time and time again. So when I make a statement like this, it's based upon my experience. And again, I'm 71 years old. I've met so many of these young people in prison. And over the past 25 years, I've met so many of these gangbangers, these kids that have gotten themselves in trouble because they have no guidance. They're brought up in a single family home and it's tough. And I've said this so many times, you know, I have seven children and it's rough raising them even in the best of circumstances. When you take away, you know, that, that father figure or, you know, people around these young people that can guide them and teach them, it's very, very tough. They have more negative influences at their fingertips on their phones. They're being bombarded all the time. 
It's a tough situation. And all I can say is, you know, my heart goes out to the families of these people. I can't even imagine what they're going through today to, to wake up to something like this or to get that phone call. God forbid. It's so horrible. So, you know, my heart goes out. And people, let's not politicize this. Let's try to find the root causes of this and see what we can do to try to help these young people out. You know what? The environment that they're living in today, we adults created it. And we owe them to give it back to try to find solutions so that these things don't occur anymore. They're tragic and they're happening too often. And we have to figure this out. We have to do something about it. You know, and uh, this is not the time to go into, you know, all of this right now. I just wanted to mention it and say my heart goes out. And, you know, I pray to God that there's some comfort. Uh, I don't know how that some comfort can come to the families of, of these young boys and girls that were tragically killed and the adult. You know, I mean, it's it's horrible, too. We, we tend to look at the kids and forget that there was an adult. I believe a teacher that was shot also, maybe two. I don't even know, you know, it's, it's just so terrible. You don't even want to hear the facts about it. You just want to do something about it. So that's my take on that for the moment. You know, many, many years ago, after I had received my instruction from Tom DeBella, who was the boss of my family at the time, my father proposed me. I went to see Tom, a guy by the name of little Jojo by Taco. He was a soldier under my dad, very, very loyal. He was very happy the day that um, I went to visit Tom, the fact that I was proposed. I knew him all my life. And I've gotten instruction from Tom about what I needed to do as a recruit. You know, just every day you're, you're at the uh, call of your boss and whatever you're told to do, you do. If your mother is sick and dying, you're at her bedside, you leave your mother's side, you come to serve the family if you're called. That's the kind of commitment. But look, one of the horrors of that life, I'll say it, is that there is a lot of violence. People get killed. People get murdered. We understand that. People have said to me, well, Michael, you weren't real gangster. You, weren't, you didn't kill anybody. People, let me tell you this. You spent 20 years in that life as a made guy. Unfortunately, you see your share of violent acts. I'm going to leave it at that. And again, I don't like to talk about it, but it's a fact. That's it. So after I got my commission, I would say, from Tom DeBella, little Jojo started talking to me, started schooling me a little bit. He was around a long time. Of course, you know, my dad was my advisor, a counselor, as was Andrew Russo. We talked about him. He passed away a short time ago. But Jojo said, Mike, look, one of the realities of this life is you're going to be involved. There's violence. You're going to see it. It's going to be around you. It's not pleasant, but when you got to do what you got to do or see what you got to see, that's a fact of this life. So he says, I want to take you on a drive somewhere. And we went to a place that's kind of on the uh, borderline between Queens and Brooklyn, and it's a place called The Hole. And unfortunately, it was kind of a burial ground for a lot of guys. They called it Gotti's favorite burial place. Again, I don't know if that's a fact or not. That's what they've called it. Obviously, I heard things on the street and it was a the worst part of town that you want to be in. It was like just a desolate area. It was it smelled because they didn't have sewer systems in there. They had to use septic tanks and cesspools. It was probably the worst part of town that you could be in. Think of your worst part of town, wherever you live, and this being worse than that. It was kind of abandoned. Not people lived there because they had to live there. You know, it was kind of poverty stricken or maybe because they just liked the isolation because nobody would really go down there. There was nothing attractive about it. And way back in the early 80s, there was a couple of kids that were playing and they smelled something horrible and they went to see what it was, you know, in the area that the odor was coming from and it was a dead body. And that kind of attracted the police to the area, and they started digging up bodies there. And yes, it was a burial ground for the mob. Sonny Red, you know who Sonny Red is? He was one of the bodies that was dug up there. You saw the movie um, uh, Donnie Brasco. You remember the feud between Sonny Red and Sonny Black? You remember the scene where Sonny Red was killed, where him and part of his crew, they were killed? That's where the bodies were buried. And another couple of guys that I can mention, you would know their names. And I think if anybody took the time to really excavate that area, they would find a ton of dead bodies there because it was a burial ground and who knows how far back it was. And uh, so Jojo took me for a ride there and he said, Michael, you know, hopefully the day won't come when you ever need to visit this place again, but uh, I want to make you aware of certain things. And this was one of, of a few places that he took me to. And again, it's called a hole desolate part of town, ugly part of town, the stench, the odor is still there. 
I think it's in the, uh, being it's on the borderline of Queens and Brooklyn, there are two police departments that actually patrol this area. They don't even want to go there, um, from what I understand. And I heard that from law enforcement that was around. They don't even want to go there. So the place is, is known now. I would assume that every once in a while, if a body is missing, that's the place they go to see if maybe they can dig it up or there's a, a fresh burial place that they'll recognize. But it's that kind of place. It's flooded all the time because, again, there is no real sewage system there. Cesspools and septic tanks, you know, they're not the ideal way of getting rid of sewage. Um, and especially when they're not kept up, you know, in, in the right way. You know, a bad place. And, you know, look, you know, there's a lot of guys on YouTube and they talk about, you know, murder and a lot of the violence in that. And, you know, people have knocked me, you know, they've called me a racketeer and not a gangster. And I can tell you these people, I take that as a compliment. I don't want to be known as the guy that was happy to pull the trigger. I don't want to be known as the guy that that was the first cause of action. You know, look, we can talk about Roy DeMeo because everybody knows it's public, it's there. We know what he did at the Gemini Lounge. And if you look at Roy and you read everything about him, you say, hey, that's a guy that loved to kill people. You know, he got off on it. This was his way of solving problems. And there were certain guys in that life that acted that way, I have to be honest. Greg Scarpa, you know, maybe it didn't bother him when he had to pull the trigger. You know, I knew Greg pretty well. I'm not going to comment beyond that. He has his reputation. And there are a few guys, you know, we talk about the Iceman. We, we saw movies about him that were embellished, no question about it. These movies are embellished. We talked about, uh, you know, a lot of other guys. I don't have to mention all their names. Look, it's an unpleasant part of the life. It really is. And unfortunately, when this happens, you have to do something to dispose of the body, right? And so they have places like this. There's another one you know, um, Jersey, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania area where bodies were found and bodies were disposed of. It's almost like I don't even know how to continue the conversation myself other than to tell you this. People, murder, violence, it's an ugly part of life. And we see so much of it lately. We see it in our schools. We see it in our churches. We see it everywhere. And we can blame guns you know, it's not about the guns, it's about the people that have the guns. And let me tell you this, again, I'm not gonna get into the politics, but it's like drugs. You make drugs illegal, there'll be more drugs on the street than you can imagine. There's a black market for these things. We have to find a solution to this. You know, to me, listen, when you don't have God in your life and you don't have an end game, listen, my end game is to get to heaven. You know, that's what Christians believe. We're on this earth, it's a journey, but the end game for us is to get to heaven we believe there is a heaven, we believe there is a hell, and we understand what we need to do to get to heaven, and that is to repent our sins and to believe in Jesus. And that's what motivates us and drives us. And you know, some of you that don't share our faith, you can say that's a fairy tale, but we don't believe that. We believe strongly in our faith. And if it keeps us on the right track, and it stops us from doing some of the things that we're seeing. You know, a lot of people say religion is the cause of violence. Well, no, a distorted view of religion might be the cause of violence. You know, there might be a distortion there that causes it. But people that have faith and believe in God and believe in, in, in love and mercy, you know, that's not what the cause of violence is. It's people that distort that belief, distort that faith, distort that love and mercy and grace. That's what that's all about. So. You know, people, look, uh, I can go on, but I'm, I'm very disturbed about this. Look, I have seven kids. I got six grandchildren, and uh, I love young people. And to see something like this happen is just so tragic, and it's going to go on for uh, days, and we're going to mourn this, and we're going to hope to God that it doesn't happen again. And I'm, I'm imploring our government, our law enforcement, our local politicians, find a solution. Listen, if it's to put security guards in, in schools, if that's what it's come to, fine. They don't have to be so overt as to scare kids. Most of these retired law enforcement people, they're nice people. They know how to deal with children. They love kids. They're not going to be so ostentatious and so out there that they're going to scare people around them. But gosh, they're trained. They understand. They can see things. This is what they do. Maybe that's the answer. I don't know. But, you know, all the local politicians, the local school groups, they got to get together and find a solution because this is happening far too often. And we don't want to have a burial ground in cemeteries similar to a burial ground that we have with mobsters. We don't want this. 
We don't want it, and we've got to find a solution to it. So all I can say is, you know, my heart goes out to all the people out there that are suffering this, this terrible tragedy. It's the families that really suffer. Um, my heart goes out to you. My prayers go out to you. And uh, I just really hope, again, we do find a solution to this. And that's what we all as a community, as a nation, as a people need to work towards. I said my piece for today. I hope you're with me on this, people. I really do. Uh, we got to find a solution. But for now, let's pray for the people that are mourning. Uh, they, do, they certainly need our help and they need comfort. And let's give it to them the best way that we can. So that's it for today. How do I always leave you? Same way. Same way. And uh, be safe. Ladies, please be safe in the parking lots. Look around you. Be aware. You know, Ever since I left the street, my instinct, every time I walk, I'm looking around myself, not because I'm afraid of people from my past, just instinctive, and especially today. Be safe, ladies. Be healthy. Do yourself a favor. Eat right, exercise, be healthy. This can be a good life if we take care of ourselves. I mean this from the bottom of my heart, especially all those people that are mourning today. God bless all of you. And yes, God willing, I'll see you next time. Take care.